Part 1. White Clouds. Harpstring Moon. Familiar Scenery. So Chapter 2 starts with this bridge. I like this bridge. This is a good bridge. It's two characters wide, limiting the available options for your students, and it immediately has you make a choice between two strategies. The first option is to set up a wall, pulling them in and finishing them off. But most of your students haven't developed their tanking abilities yet, and taking on that much damage could prove fatal. The second option is to make use of the incredibly potent stride gambit and to take them all out, which will take some planning thanks to the limited amount of space on the bridge. And on top of that, it pulls aggro into the next group of enemies, meaning you gotta bounce from one fight to the next. I love it. This bridge is fire. This bridge is flames. The rest of the map, though... Well, we start to see why we only used half of our class in the last chapter. We have way too many units available versus the enemy. We engage them three or four at a time, in the wide open, while we have nine whole students to work with. It's pretty easy to overwhelm the enemy with our superior numbers, abusing the 1-2 range and taking pretty much no damage at all ever. In the early levels of most Fire Emblem games, you're actively engaged with enemies that can be anywhere from the same number as the player units to almost double that. This forced players to balance offense and defense. You gotta make clean kills to conserve your HP while also trying to protect the fragile units. Which by the way, this is one of the funnest parts of the franchise. Here the enemies are so few and far between that a third of the students just don't have anything to do, which is dumb. I don't think it would be unreasonable to slap an extra unit onto each group. They even tried to add extra units in hard mode, they just need to add a little bit more on top of that, you know? They do try to remedy this by making the branching paths, offering a chest and the opportunity to split the force at the top as incentive. But the chest is right there. It's right fucking there. There's only one guy in this lonely staircase, and a majority of the forces have already aggroed to the central area, meaning there's almost no reason not to just pop in, kill the guy, get the chest, and just reunite with the whole group. They could have easily improved this by moving the chest past the staircase and having it located in the enemy's range. It feels like they only put the chest in the split path here just for the sake of introducing it as a mechanic and not really designing the levels with said mechanics in mind. And it wraps up with a boss who has one range and who doesn't move. Great. Just great. This map starts out strong and then falls apart on every single front. I would like to think that they are taking it easy with the early maps, and I subscribe to the notion that some of these things may be fixed in the harder difficulties. As it stands now though, 3 out of 10. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha